10 months ago, we left the UK on our sailing boat Tailey, and now after 5,000 nautical miles on another continent, we're preparing to sail the final leg to where we'll be hauling up for hurricane season. But fear not, over the next few months, we'll be taking you all the way back to visit the UK and then start the process of some of our most wicked upgrades yet. It is the most beautiful thing we bought the boat. Yeah, the engineering in it is just wicked. But let's not get too ahead of ourselves. We have 75 nautical miles ahead of us and a tractor and trailer rigged up to lift us out. So click subscribe, sit back and enjoy our final sale of the 2023 season. Let's go. It is a really beautiful evening. Like really nice wind. Fish jump. Wow. I think it was a fish. We're just going through the really narrow channel now. It doesn't look that narrow on camera, but it's a bit shallow in places, rocks in places. So yeah, I gotta concentrate on this stretch. Oh, dolphins for our last sale. Wow, there's so many. That was just absolutely incredible. They're, they're, still they're still here. This is our last sale of the season. And we had dolphins on the first sale of the season back in Devon when we sailed to Polk Harris and yeah, it was amazing then and it was amazing now and yeah, it's funny because I've kind of wished for dolphins for a while but it seems like they come when you least expect them. Now on the last trip I was really hoping we'd see dolphins because they just lighten the mood and make everything feel okay and they weren't there and now they're absolutely everywhere and yeah, it's already made my day. Made my last trip of the season very memorable. Zach, pre made dinner earlier and it's a game changer. Thank you. I didn't want to cook when we first started Voyage. If you're organised enough, it does. Yeah, it's nice. We got dolphins still jumping out around us as we eat dinner. We're so lucky. <laughs> so I've just finished my shift. It's 11 o'clock and I was going to say the AP, which is our autopilot, we can't say its name, was doing great. But then I actually just recorded a clip saying the word and it went off for the first time in four hours. So what are the chances? It definitely listens. Zach's just gone up. Um, I've just come down here, but the wind has been really good. It's been kind of 16 knots uh, on the screen, which is about 21 knots because we go about five, six knots. Um, and then at points we go a bit faster and the wind picks up to 17, 18 on the screen. We've got our full Genoa out and our main is reefed once. Um, once it gets to 18 on the screen, we're gonna start reefing it in. She's actually just getting that ready to read now, but let me just offer it. See if he needs a hand. Can you do a hand? Sure. Okay. Um, but yeah, the sea state has got a bit mushy. Uh, it's meant to be 1.7 meter waves at five seconds, and it's yeah, it it's gradually got bigger through the shift, but now um, the waves are getting around the top of the island and definitely is a bit mushy out there. It's probably one of the shortest wave periods we've had. But th this is where we are. So, that's Curacao. And then we're heading here. Um, but the, we were sheltered by the island for a while, but now the waves are coming here and they're starting to get round the tip and kind of come sideways. So, yeah, but so our speed, our average speed has been 5.7 knots, max speed 7.9 knots, all very nice. We passed these ships earlier, you can see these here, the cargo ships. But anyway, I've got to get some sleep because I'm up again in 3 hours and 50 minutes, so yeah, night everyone. It's currently about 3am and I've just gotten off my shift. Becca's up there at the moment, we can just about see lights. 
we are 22 nautical miles away so I'm gonna get another two hours sleep Becca's getting another two and then by the time she wakes up we'll be just going into the channel and it'll be seven ish or so I think we're gonna slow down a little bit between now and then but we've made a really good time I think we've averaged about six knots for this crossing which is pretty nice but I'm knackered and neither of us slept that well because you never really do on one-line passages, but yeah, I'm gonna get some sleep now. So we are in, oh god, I can't talk. We're into Aruba. It's the evening now. We've had a very lazy day. It was a bit of a mm, sleepless night. Would you say that? Yeah, it was, it was just, yeah, it's just an overnight. Isn't it? You never sleep that well on a single overnight. Yeah, we had beautiful wind and waves while we were by the island, obviously. And dolphins coming out the water. It was a really nice section then and then my first shift was beautiful and then the wind as forecast just started picking up around what time was it like 11 uh, I guess yeah, yeah maybe a bit later now because 11 is when I came on so it's probably more like 3 yeah and the wind at that point it was kind of getting to what I was saying like 22 knots on the screen quite consistently and we were doing 6-7 knots so yeah it was almost up to 30 which was quite windy I ended up hand steering for about an hour and a half because I was sick of the autopilot, <laughs> but that's a whole other story in itself. But yeah, we got into the dock around 7, yeah, 7.30, seven. and we thought they opened at 8, but they were there waiting for us, <laughs> which was nice. So yeah, checked in, gave customs our spear gun and pole spear for the, yeah. the next few months. Hopefully they take care of it. But yeah, they hopped on. It was actually the first time we'd ever had officials on the boat to check. It's a very relaxed check. <laughs> They're looking for excess alcohol, cigarettes, weapons, people, drugs, all those anything. All those things. But yeah, we um obviously didn't have any, but yeah, and then we just headed into the anchorage here. It's very shallow. That's something we did find. The dock was one point eight below. And we're only in two meters here. We're in two meters here and coming in the channel was nerve-wracking we got down to 1.2 didn't we yeah I think that's probably the closest we've ever got to running aground yeah, um, we're 1.8 and the depth sound is halfway down so yeah it was a little bit close but we, yeah it's absolutely fine but we're hauling out tomorrow morning yeah which is crazy <laughs> so we went into the office earlier to speak to them and they were like yeah um, there's high winds coming you can just haul out 7 30 in the morning tomorrow so that's the plan we're lifting out It's haul out time, it's pretty windy but we've got this and we're really excited to start working fairly so I'm going to get the engine on, Zach's going to get the snubbers off and we're going to go lift this old boat out. I don't know why I'm so excited, most people dread this day. On the hard. We are on the hard. We lift it out. She looks really good at the moment, and 
It was just really soft growth, a few tiny barnacles. Yeah, but it wasn't too bad. Everything looks pretty solid. I'm gonna do a quick run around of the boat now just to make sure we have any soft patches, but I'm gonna crack on with the first few jobs today. First on the list is removing the seven skin fittings and seacocks we didn't change last year. We were flying back to the UK to visit our families next week and thought it would be the perfect opportunity to visit our favourite marine stores and stock up on all the boat bits we couldn't find out here. So let's get these old ones off. Those are all off now. I'm going to try and get uh, something under here just to loosen it up because at the moment that's definitely not coming up. It's obviously glued down with something but It'd be nice if we can keep these in one part because a lot of the bits on this are actually still good enough to use so we'll probably end up selling them back in the UK to someone because I think they're mostly fine and some people absolutely love these and want to put them on their boat still so yeah why not keep them. They came out pretty easily. I'm happy with that. Absolutely massive. It's like 60 foot, Zach. Thankfully, we cleaned the toilets a lot before this one because this is the out for the toilet. Um, but it's actually quite clean, which is quite nice, relatively speaking. But I turned the camera away for this bit because I didn't want you to get covered in. These ones now are the ones that are less than ideal. You see that like pinky colour almost there? We definitely need to change these ones out because they're long past good, so it's going. <laughs> epoxy putty that we put on because it started dripping a while back <laughs> but then stopped because of the putty so yeah that's even quite hard that's actually really hard I think that's C stack yeah oh that isn't that good been a little bit not worried about it at all because it's a Blake and it is it's a good one but we we're slightly <laughs> more cautious out. about this one it's coming out yeah and um, without a doubt it actually when I went to do that just then it does feel a bit seized so yeah, it's coming out, so have fun, Zachary. Come on. <laughs> <sighs> oh. Is it out? Yeah.
With the skin fittings and seacocks off, it was time to get the anchor down and that stinking chain out the locker. We were going to be doing a complete overhaul of our windlass, locker and inspecting our chain, but when we got back from the UK. When you're on hard during hurricane season, you are also meant to take off any windage. So next up was taking our sails down. Funny thing about the ABC Islands is that they are always windy. So this might be a tad spicy. <laughs> it is Sunday on board Haley. We're obviously in the boatyard at the moment and we're leaving on Thursday. But before Thursday, we need to take down all three sails on board just to storm prep the boat. Um, they don't touch wood, get any big systems here normally but we're gonna be leaving the boat for a month and the last thing we wanna do is have to worry about the boat if something does roll through. So we need to take off all the windage and we won't be sailing again until October. So we just, we wanna preserve the sails and the stack packs and all that kind of stuff. So we're gonna be taking everything off the boat. <laughs> yeah, so proud of us. Nice. Oh my gosh, that's so good. You could have done that better if you tried. Yes. Job well done. Now for one of the last bits of windage, our dinghy. But this needs a bloody good clean before we store it. Oh, and the Lazarette's estate, so I'm going to hop in there and tidy that now. At the moment, I just want to organise in here because it's it's just, yeah, awful. Really, really bad. It's probably the worst it's ever been. There's stuff everywhere, but... Give me 20 minutes and this will be sorted. Look at this. Pretty good in there. So the dinghy stuff there. We've got the spare anchor and some of the eight strand keeping it all nice and snug in there. Our two empty fuel jugs at the moment, we won't keep them on top of the lines. And then all of the lines are in that bucket now, which is so much easier. Thanks so much for joining us here in Aruba for a haul out this week. Next week we head to the UK 
Oh, and past Becca. You had such a cool surprise that week. Catch you then.